Twój przewodnik po świecie języka angielskiego. Dzień dobry, witam bardzo serdecznie. Tutaj Monika Podbielska. Witam Was w tym trudnym dla nas wszystkich czasie, ale też czasie szczególnym, ponieważ mamy wokół siebie budzącą się przyrodę. Robi się coraz cieplej i dzięki temu mogę nasze dzisiejsze spotkanie nagrywać dla Was na tarasie Villa Podlachia na Podlasiu, gdzie również prowadzę nasze zajęcia stacjonarne. Tutaj dzięki pięknym dźwiękom otaczającej nas przyrody, dzięki otaczającemu nas tak naprawdę pustkowiu i odizolowaniu jesteśmy w stanie szybko nauczyć się wyznaczonych celów z języka angielskiego, dzięki temu, że właśnie jesteśmy skupieni tylko na naszym wyniku i na tym, czego chcemy się nauczyć. Na pewno będziecie w stanie dzielić ze mną te dźwięki, czyli wsłuchajcie się w to, co będziemy mogli wysłuchać dookoła. I zapraszam Was tutaj bardzo serdecznie w przyszłości, kiedy już będziemy mogli się poruszać. Dzisiejsze nasze spotkanie będzie dotyczyło świąt wielkanocnych i opowiem Wam, skąd wziął się ten termin właśnie na wiosnę, kiedy wszystko budzi się do życia. I opowiem Wam również o symbolach wielkanocnych, które dobrze znamy, ale myślę, że czasem zastanawiacie się, dlaczego właśnie te elementy symbolizują budzące się życie, symbolizują tak ważne dla nas katolików święta Wielkiej Nocy. Zapraszam. Easter. The English name Easter comes from the name of a Saxon goddess of spring and dawn called Eastre or Eostre. This name was also used for the festival of spring sun, which celebrated the awakening of new life and the death of winter. Gradually, the Christian Easter replaced the pagan festival, although some of the rituals were still preserved. In the Christian culture, Easter commemorates Christ's resurrection from the tomb where he had been lying for three days after his crucifixion. He resurrected to fulfill his promise of eternal life. Jesus had gone to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover celebrations and was crucified after the first day of his Jewish holiday. Passover was celebrated on the 14th day of the Jewish month of Nisan, today it is July, and commemorates the escape of the Jews from years of slavery in Egypt. Consequently, Easter was celebrated on the same day for many years. However, Passover was a movable festival identified by the lunar calendar On the other hand, though, Christians believed that Easter should always fall on a Sunday, the day Christ was resurrected. In the year 325 A.D., Anno Domini, it was decided that Easter should fall on the first Sunday after the first full moon after the first day of spring. The matter was settled in 1582 when Julian calendar was replaced by the Georgian one, resulting in the difference of 11 days. All Roman Catholic nations accepted the new calendar immediately, with the exception of the Great Britain and its colonies, which did not make change until 1752. In the Eastern Orthodox Church, uh, they still follow the Julian calendar, which results in the later observance of Easter by its members. We get prepared to the day of Easter Sunday during the preceding 40 days called Lent. The first day of Lent is Ash Wednesday, when, in the Roman Catholic Church, We are sprinkled with ash, obtained from burnt palms, saved from the previous Palm Sunday with the words. Remember, 
that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. The events that led up to Jesus' crucifixion have been commemorated in the Holy Week. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the Sunday preceding his crucifixion, he was hailed as a king, and the people spread the palm branches in his path. Thus, Palm Sunday, one week before Easter, initiates the Holy Week. Monday Thursday commemorates the Last Supper, during which Jesus gave his disciples final words of comfort, help and guidance. He also reminded them that they were obliged to keep his commandments to love the Father and each other. Good Friday commemorates the crucifixion and that is why it is the most solemn day of the Holy Week. Sadness, prayer and mourning characterize church services held on this day. Good Friday is followed by Easter Eve, the Saturday when Christ rested in his tomb. This fact is observed in some churches by lighting of paschal candles and that is why Easter Eve is sometimes called the night of illumination. Easter Sunday and Easter Monday and Holy Week. The obvious symbols of life and resurrection are eggs, Already the people of ancient China, Egypt, Greece, Persia, Babylon and Rome used them, mainly as gifts. Centuries before the first Easter day, during the great spring festivals, when the revival of all things in nature was celebrated. The Chinese are known to have exchanged scarlet eggs at the spring festival, as far back as 900 B.C. It is likely that red was originally preferred to other colors because, like the red itself, it is an emblem of love and joy. Yellow was also a popular color because it stood for the returning sun. The early Christians saw them as emblems of Christ's resurrection, as emblems of love and peace, as holy and appropriate gifts for Easter. Eggs were brought to church to be blessed and given to the priest, relatives, friends and neighbors. Coloring and decorating the eggs seem to have been the custom since no time to be well remembered. An old Polish legend says that St. Mary herself painted eggs red, blue and green to amuse the infant Jesus and all good mothers do the same at Easter. A Romanian tale says that vivid red shade, which is favorite almost everywhere, represents the blood of Christ. On Calvary, St. Mary gave a basket of eggs to the soldiers in the hope that they might treat her son more kindly and his blood flowing down over the eggs lying at the foot of the cross dyed them scarlet. Romanian women believe that this is why Easter eggs are so often painted red. Another symbol of Easter is the Easter hair. Ancient Egyptians linked the hair with the moon. And when the early Christians linked the moon with Easter, they may have unwittingly taken with it the fairy stowaway. The old Germanic legend says that the very first hair was created by fashioning from a bird. Once a year, on the occasion of the spring festival, The grateful hare would express its thanks by laying eggs. For ages now, the legend has been reborn and throughout Christendom, 
there are no stronger Easter symbols than the Easter hair and life-renewing eggs. Another legend attributes its origins to an old woman in Germany who was too poor to buy treats for her children. Instead, she dyed eggs all colors, placed them in nests of grass and sticks, and told the children to hunt for the surprises in the garden. While they were looking, a rabbit hopped out of the nest, and one of the children shouted, The rabbit has left colored eggs for our Easter Sunday surprise. German immigrants who settled in Texas introduced the legend, and it has grown with succeeding generations. At Easter time, spring flowers make the gardens bright. Brilliant red tulips, yellow daffodils bloom just then after dreary winter and change the world into a magical one. Another flower, which has become one of Easter symbols, is the white lily. It is called an angel of flowers and represents beauty and goodness. It appears on every altar and is often placed in Easter tables as a decorative means. And now I would like to wish you all Happy Easter, a lot of health, peace and joy and big hugs to all of you. I zapraszam do pobierania tekstu żebyście mogli dokładnie sprawdzić słownictwo ze strony www.monikapodbielska.com Wesołych Świąt! Pozdrawiam! Monika Podbielska